giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Well, we are going to move on and start taking some of the questions that were submitted to us before the show started. Um, so we're going to start rattling off through some of these. Um, I'm going to bundle some of the questions we've gotten t up together because we kind of have a lot of questions that are similar to each other. So uh, Joe G from Chief Delphi, he asks, how does a team like yours, which clearly has the resources to build some level of a do everything bot, accurately assess early in the build process that by foregoing functionality like an elevator, for example, you'll be able to achieve the incredible cycle rates you're achieving. And um, to add on to that, the dude from Discord asks, why did you decide to do a low bot instead of one with an elevator? So those kind of go together. I don't know who wants to field that one. Um, I guess I will. So I guess we don't, we don't feel like we are at the level where we can do a do everything bot that will be really, really good. So we choose to do something that we think will be easier. Um, so like last year's robot was people, like some people thought last year's robot was really simple. It was just like a, the swerve drive with a basic elevator, but I, that robot was like 119.7 pounds. Like we didn't like, I don't know. We're, we're just not, we're at the level where we can do anything too crazy. So we prefer to do something simpler and like looking through the rules this year, we kind of saw this, like we can be a low bot. The high goals aren't worth any, any extra points um, besides mm -hmm. the ranking point. Um, so it kind of became this decision, like, do we want to go for the rocket or we, do we want to figure out how to level three climb? Cause we didn't really feel like we had the, bandwidth to do both and the level three climb seemed like a lot easier uh like rank a lot more like guaranteed ranking point it can't be defended r really and it it's should only like it's kind of tricky to figure out but once it is figured out it should only it should take 10 seconds or less to do every match um yeah so that's kind of sure how we came to that decision yeah, I think that plays a lot into what you've talked about. It just kind of, you know, a return on investment kind of look at things is if it's going to take X amount of time to do something and you only have so much of that time or resource to do it, you know, what's the best use of it then? So it makes a lot of sense. Um, moving on to a question from Britain from Chief Delphi, Team 4488. Uh, a lot of teams want to make Swerve and you guys are great at making it. How long has your team been working on Swerve? How long did it take for it? to be competition ready and do you think a team with no experience could buy your modules and use your code to create a competition ready swerve in a build season and to add on to that clayton from discord on team 27 asks what inspired you to start developing your swerve drive was there a specific technical challenge or goal that you wanted to meet or was it just for general development so um like i was inspired way back in when I was a student in like 2010, when I saw uh, 1983 Swerve and at Worlds um, Wild Stank Swerve, I think that was 2009 actually. Um, so I don't know, I thought Swerve was cool all the way back then. And then when I came back to Mentor, um, seeing all these new Swerves, like Aaron Hill's Swerve on Chief Delphi and stuff was pretty exciting. Um, so we started, developing our swerve in the summer of 2017 and by the fall we had it up and running on our mini swerve chassis with um yeah and by then it was like working well enough that we thought it could be an option for the 2018 season okay and yeah would i recommend um so yeah you you can do i think a team could buy the modules and use our code to have a competition ready swerve in a build season. Um, I know teams have done that this year. I don't know if it's like, it, I guess it depends how much bandwidth your team has, if that's the smartest use of your time. Um, I would definitely recommend if you are thinking about doing that, um, trying to get it done in the off season, because that's all stuff that can be done in the off season. Um, and then you're just sure. don't have to worry about it. All right. Uh, our next question is 
Uh, again, a few kind of a few questions kind of thrown together. Uh, Caltran from Discord uh, from 2410 asks: Are there any swerve specific drills that 2910 runs during practice? Uh, Theo from Discord from Team 488 would like to know how many hours of drive practice do the gods known as the 2910 drivers get each season? And finally, uh, BS. Reen Vias, I'm not sure how to say it, uh, from Discord set, uh, asks, how do you practice getting around defense? So all kind of centered around defense. Generally, how do you guys approach drive practice? Anything in particular you guys kind of do? Yeah, so um, we don't really do any like swerve specific drills. Um, we run field oriented. So uh, once you get used to field oriented, you don't really need to remember to move sideways. It just starts you know, happening automatically. Um, and I would say getting used to field oriented probably takes around like maybe an hour, hour and a half of just driving uh, with it. Um, and so then for drive practice, um, we um, we have probably about equal to what we've actually played in the comp- on the field this year. So we probably have around you know 50 plus worth of matches uh, driving uh, on the practice spot. Um, and that's a lot because we made a practice spot this year, which is the uh, first time we've ever done that, like an actual uh, pretty much almost perfect copy of our competition bot. Um, and then we practice against defense uh, at the practice field that we go to uh, when there's other robots there who want to practice defense against us. Um, and then we also made a uh, defense bot specifically for practicing defense against. Awesome. Um and just the follow-up, so you said you're field-centric. Are you, is your steering field-centric or just the translation? Just, just translation. Okay, and so is it robot-centric then for, for steering, just left yes. or right? Yeah, steering's just left or right. Okay, awesome. All right, moving on. Uh, Trent B. from Discord and Team 1807 asks, does 2910 have any mechanism they are working on for Worlds? Any cheesecake? Anything like that? Um, well, we aren't really planning on anything major for Worlds or District Champs either. Um, after every competition, we generally make some small change to our robot. Like after Mount Vernon, we uh, implemented a Neo protection system on our Swerve modules because we uh, broke seven of them at Mount Vernon because we kept running them into the cargo ship. Um, uh, yes. I can relate. I can relate yeah. very much to that. <laughs> yeah, so we've made a few little changes. But, no, we don't plan on doing anything major. All right. And then our next question comes from Labib12 off of Discord. Uh, Why do the wheels on 2910's intake spin while a cargo ball has been secured into their bot? What effect does this have? All right, I'll take this one as well. So we spin the bottom intake wheels on our cargo intake out uh, while we're spinning the top ones in because that actually keeps the ball rolling, as you can see from watching our robot. I um, mean, what, th- what that does for us is it, it reduces the, uh, how hard the ball is pushing against our bumpers and intake while we're trying to intake it. And so that makes it easier for the mechanism wheels to do their work of pulling the ball towards the center, you know, with those uh, diagonal rollers on them. Um, and we've found before, like during build season, we popped a cargo ball or two by intaking both, of, using both of those wheels to intake because it would like pull the ball in between some standoffs in our frame and just shred it. Awesome. Makes a lot of sense. All right. So before we move on to taking questions that you guys have been posting in the chat throughout the show tonight, um, we are going to start our swag giveaway from 2910. So if you are interested in winning some of that sweet, sweet merch that uh, 2910 has been gracious enough to donate to the show tonight, uh, make sure you click that follow button, the green heart in the top right corner, and type in the code. The code is... 2910 in 2019 all one word so in numbers for all of that so i believe tyler just spammed it a bunch in the chat so if you would like to win copy that and post that in the chat uh also if you are subscribed to the channel or you choose to subscribe right now you will get a five times chance of winning so be sure to give yourself the best chance possible and support the channel uh good luck to everybody and we'll draw a winner in just a few minutes Uh, For now, we're going to move on to taking some of the questions that have come in from the chat. So the first one comes from Matt underscore IWNL, and they they ask, why Swerve Drive and not something like an H Drive? Anybody? Yeah, the main, like, a Swerve Drive, 
I guess it's like theoretically better than an H drive because it has, um, it should have as much traction as like a normal tank drive, except it can also move sideways. Sure. All right. Uh, Swimmer76 asks, how do you deal with students that already have knowledge coming in uh, to the team? So this was, I think, uh, they asked this when we were talking about, you know, how do you educate your team? So so maybe, you know, do you have them jump in further along in some of that training, or do you have them start from the beginning, maybe? Um, we do still have every new member complete training, but there's really no drawback to having members who have previous experience. It's generally a nice bonus to have members who already know what they're doing. I'm just gonna yeah. Does anybody like, else want to expand? Yeah, returning members um, tend to get like involved in teaching the training. Right. Yeah. So, so maybe the newer people that are, if they're coming in with some knowledge that that maybe the newer people don't, then they can kind of jump right into to kind of helping teach new newer students. Then. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially okay. when we're like working through stuff in CAD training, and everybody has their computers out, um, can help people. Sure. Um, so our next question is uh, from Spaceman Nick, and uh, he would like to know, how do you get the team to follow deadlines? We tried this year, but the attempt fell flat. So maybe do you guys have any techniques that, you know, kind of regulate those guidelines? I know some teams use like Gantt charts and stuff like that. Do you guys do anything in particular or do you just try to stay disciplined? We don't really do anything like in particular. Um, I know since I'm director of engineering, uh, you know, when we were starting to sort of fall behind slightly in CAD, it was just daily like reminders like, hey, CAD is going to is CAD going to get done soon? Uh, what's an estimate? Um, and then if you notice that something that someone specifically is falling behind, uh, you know, always you send someone over there and you try to figure out how to, you know, get it done faster. Um, and then also with falling deadlines, if you slip deadlines, we uh, like this year um, since CAD went a little bit over, um, we said, okay, we're going to shrink the assembly time a little bit, so there's going to be uh, more meetings to and or longer meetings, so we could get the robot assembled and ready to go. Oh, and maybe since you mentioned meetings, I'm not sure we really covered this. Uh, maybe how often do you guys kind of meet each week during build season, um, and and for how long? Just so teams have an idea how much time you guys put in. Yeah. So um, during the weekdays, uh, we during the week we meet uh, Monday through Thursday uh, from six to nine. And then Saturdays from nine to six. Um, but uh, we have it structured since we have so many students and not a huge shop space. Um, we have uh, sort of students are staggered on which days they come in. So some students might only come uh, Monday, Wednesday, and then Saturday morning. Um, and yeah. Are, are students required to make that amount of attendance as a minimum? Do you guys have any kind of requirements or is it all just that's kind of what you're assigned or? How do you guys manage that? So we we do uh, want students to show up on the days that we assign them to, but we understand that if you can't make it, you can't make it. Um, it's not like a strict requirement, but if you don't, uh, it, it it's not a requirement just to be on the team, but to travel with the team. In some cases, it is um, very important that you show up and make uh, like noticeable contributions. And we, we do have a core group of students who we encourage or we, we want to show up every day. Um, kind of the sub team leads and the, the mm. ones who really know how to get stuff done. Sure. All right. Oh, yeah. How much how often do you guys meet in the off season as well then? Um, or is it the same? I'm sure it's likely less. Um, but you know, do you guys meet all year long or? Do you kind of take some time off? In so the you, fall, uh, we have like where we have Monday meetings, sort of general meetings, and then um, various trainings throughout the week. And um, it depends on which trainings the specific student wants to go to. Um, okay. Jacob. Uh, yeah. Um, and then like during the summer and after build season, well, during the summer, really, um, it's really only meeting uh, specific people maybe get together want to say hey we want to work on an off-season project um, and they pretty much work out um, when they want to meet and when someone can uh, get them into the shop so or if they need to be in the shop 
So I know with uh, some of the uh, CAD stuff, uh, we did some CAD uh, lessons over the summer. Um, and those, I believe, are meeting once a, di once a week, uh, I think on Wednesdays, if I remember correctly. That sounds about right. Yeah, so it's just um, when people can be there, really. All right, so next question comes from Matt IWNL, and they would like to ask, uh, I wonder I wonder 2910's thoughts about no more bag starting next year, bag attack day, and whether their deadlines they mentioned will still be as tight. So I don't know if you guys have thought about that at all yet, but do you think you'll change anything about your approach without the bag next year? Um, if we are competing at a week one event, I think it'll be pretty similar. Um, maybe like stuff may shift like a week further out, but we do really like those early events because, um, competing at those just gives us more experience when we're going, like we're showing up to our second event and it's most people's first event. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we'll try to, it'll, it'll probably be pretty similar. Maybe. And I don't, I don't think we covered this either. Um, do you guys build two robots? At, so do you have a practice robot, or do you only do one robot? And then, like, I guess similar then, would do your would you think you'll change your approach starting next year because of no bag? So uh -oh. we do have a practice robot this year. Uh, this year is our first time actually making a full copy uh, practice robot. I think we tried in 2015 and it didn't really work. Uh, but this is like first year you could take the code, deploy it on the other robot, and it just runs. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is the first year we've done that. And then, Patrick, do you want to talk about what we might do next year? Yeah, I don't, we haven't really uh, decided. I don't know. We're going to mm -hmm. need to think about that still. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, another question that just came in James G from Team 2605 would like to ask Do you consider a drive base other than Swerve during your strategy meetings at the beginning of the year? Or, you know, do you guys just kind of lock into Swerve right away? Um, so it's like going into this season, it's like, we're either doing a West coast drive or we're doing a swerve. And, um, it, I think we, we kind of have this decision made, uh, probably by like the second day, um, when we're figuring out how we're going to do stuff. Um, so it gets, it gets made pretty early. Um, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so maybe to expand on the swerve, because I, I didn't ask you guys about this earlier. So you guys are one of, there's a number of teams that in their history have, have come up with something, you know, for their team that they end up deciding this is something that maybe the rest of the community would want. So we're going to go ahead and sell it. You know, 221 Systems ended up existing. Andy Mark, you know, was started by Andy Baker and Mark, you know, and, and they were with FRC before they started that company. So obviously you guys have started selling your swerve module now. So maybe you guys can talk just for a minute or two about, um, you know, kind of what, what made you guys decide that this, that was kind of a worthy endeavor to, to actually put some investment and time into, into kind of making it almost like a business, you know? Yeah. So, um, so this is like my side project. It's not, um, so, I mean, it's sort of tied into 2910, but it's like operated completely separately. All the okay. swerve drive specialties parts are, uh, machined in my garage, not, uh, at 2910 shop and I guess I don't know it's just something that I thought would be really cool to do and okay. um, yeah this first year has been pretty good we've had quite a few PNW teams like a, like a handful who have um, are using the mark one modules and a few other teams outside of PNW as well so do you, and maybe as, as a way to kind of follow up on the module you guys have now, I know you guys came out with the latest version of the module right before the season started with the Neos having come out. You guys kind of adopted it for those. Um, do you guys have any future improvements that you've already kind of discussed about making for next off season maybe or in the future and, and anything you want to improve on the existing design of it? Um, nothing major, just tiny little tweaks to get the like belt tension just perfect and yeah so there's the uh yeah tyler has pulled up the the mark two modules available for pre-order um so yeah 
once when the neos were released in like i think it was like mid-november it was like wow these these could be a pretty big game changer especially for swerve when you're trying to swerve is so cool but it usually is a such a big weight penalty um mm-hmm. yeah so yeah I really want to get something figured out cool well I think that's going to just about wrap us up for the night. Uh, We do need to do our drawing for tonight's winner of the 2019 swag pack. So if Tyler is ready, we can roll for the winner on that. Uh, All right. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, the winner of the awesome swag pack, by the way, if you win, please make sure you shoot uh, at first updates. Now a message on Twitch or discord with your first name, last name, mailing address, city, zip code, all that stuff as well. And the winner is going to be, uh, uh, R-H-O-U-D-E-57. I'm guessing it's rude, but I'm not sure. So uh, R-H-O-U-D-E-57, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, and that person is a subscriber, so lots of rigged emotes in chat because we are clearly rigged it for our subscribers to win. Uh, so congratulations on that. Make sure you reach out to us so we can get you that. And uh, 2910, thanks a lot for the uh, awesome giveaway uh, for this evening. Make sure you go check out uh, tw- all about 2910 on social media and uh, swordrivespecialties.com. Yep. So uh, before we finish up the show for tonight, do you guys have anything coming up that you would like to maybe promote or anything interesting that's happening so far in your Destination Deep Space season? So I'm excited to, well, so at District Champs, uh, which is starting like two days, um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm pretty excited that we're going to we're going to be deep debuting uh, some new autonomous paths for Sandstorm. So that'll be fun. All right. Yeah, I just like to say thanks to all the teams who ordered Swerve modules from Swerve Drive Specialties. Um, the response has been really great, and um, yeah, the, as you saw previously, the Mark II modules are now available for pre-order. And yeah, I'm real excited about this entrepreneurial stuff. All right. Well, that is going to do it for tonight's show. We hope everyone out there enjoyed this show and that you all learned a lot from it. I know I certainly did. Uh, I need to give a massive thanks to our awesome guests from 2910 for volunteering to come on the show and for giving us all so much information about what makes them so amazing. Uh, I hope you guys had fun being on the show. Yeah. Uh, Thanks to Fun for having us on the show tonight and everyone who tuned in and asked questions. We love the support and enthusiasm for the team this year. All right, and good luck at your district championship this weekend and at the Houston championship in week eight. Uh, I also want to give a huge thanks to Tyler for producing tonight's show. If you like this show or the other content that fun produces, be sure to click the green follow button at the top right corner to keep up with all the shows and videos we post on Twitch. And if you'd like to help support us, then please click that purple subscribe box at the top. You might even have a free Twitch Prime sub available if you've synced your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Um, With that said, we're going to sign off, but... Be sure to stay tuned for the week five of the FRC Top 25 show coming up right at the top of the hour in just a couple minutes. Uh, With that, we're going to sign off. Everybody have a good night. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.